Hi, it's Paula from How to Be an Artist. Today's topic is clearing creativity blocks. Um, finding the muse again, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes we sit down to write or paint and we got nothing. And uh, here's some ways to deal with that. So um, I personally divide it into internal and external. Um, <clears throat> internal blocks. Okay, first thing you want to do is buy uh, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. It's a fantastic book and he identifies the enemy of the true artist as what he calls resistance with a capital R. And, um, <clears throat> and he's absolutely right. We are our own worst enemies. Uh, I'm just going to read a a little bit before my Kindle time's out here, um, from The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And you should go to stephenpressfield.com to read lots of amazing stuff that he's, he writes about writing. <clears throat> okay. Look in your own heart. Unless I'm crazy, right now a still small voice is piping up, telling you as it has 10,000 times before, the calling that is yours and yours alone. You know it. No one has to tell you, and unless I'm crazy, you're no closer to taking action on it than you were yesterday or will be tomorrow. You think resistance isn't real? Resistance will bury you. You know, Hitler wanted to be an artist. At 18, he took his inheritance, 700 Kronen, and moved to Vienna to live and study. He applied to the Academy of Fine Arts and later to the School of Architecture. Ever seen one of his paintings? Neither have I. Resistance beat him. Call it overstatement, but I'll say it anyway. It was easier for Hitler to start World War II than it was for him to face a blank square of canvas. I love that. Brilliant book. Anyway, so um, that's the demon that you're fighting. And there's lots of things you can do to um, force yourself to sit in the chair and work. One is... Clear your desk space, which might seem like procrastination. <laughs> if it takes you longer than 15 minutes, then it probably is procrastination. But a clean workspace uh, can really help. Um, journaling and free writing. In other words, don't work on something that you're supposed to work on. Work on something that's going to free your mind. Uh, unedited, that sort of thing. Um, uh, take a nap one of my personal favorites. Taking a nap, I feel that can totally change your your consciousness, obviously, <laughs> because you're unconscious. Um, but then when you wake up, you know, have a strong cup of coffee or whatever you do, and, and you might snap into a different headspace. Um, oh yes, uh, read stuff that you've already written or look at work that you've done, and that might entail schlepping out to the shed to look at old paintings or going online to see blogs you've written and it's it, it might seem just like an exercise in vanity but it's not it's good to remind yourself that you've done stuff before and you've overcome these obstacles before and look at all the stuff you've done uh, it can be not only empowering but it can help you get your head out of your ass and just sit down and go oh yeah I know how to do this um, and then another thing I recommend is um, writing a fear list of reasons that you're maybe not expressing yourself to the full potential of the project that you're working on. Um, for example, you know, oh, the gallery owner said I need more birds in my paintings and, you know, I don't really want to paint a bird and you're caught in that space. Fuck the birds, do what you're gonna do because that's what is important. Um, or, you know, you're writing a short story and you're like, oh, I don't wanna write this because my boyfriend's gonna recognize himself and I'm kind of painting him in a not so great light. Believe me, your boyfriend's not even gonna notice. He might not even read it and he's definitely not gonna read it if you don't write it. So just write it. Um, so that's that. So moving on to external. Um, I read this great piece in the New York Times last Sunday by Pagan Kennedy um, called How to Cultivate Serendipity. 
And it was all about um, how people make connections in the world from seemingly unrelated or disparate things. And I love that. And I do it all the time. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a very open-minded person and often will draw inspiration from anything. Um, and I, I encourage others to cultivate that habit too. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you feel like you're really, you know, chasing the muse or the muse has packed her bags and <laughs> taken a train away from you, um, you know, you can get outside, get out of your office, get out of, you know, your headspace and take a walk downtown, go to an art gallery or a museum. Those are always great for inspiration, obviously. Um, go to a library and take a random book off the shelf. Uh, you know, call someone you haven't called in a long time just to say hello. Um, you know, pick up, buy a newspaper from a stand you don't usually buy one for and randomly look in a, at an article and literally cultivate serendipity. Um, because sometimes your inspiration um, comes from a connection that uh, you weren't expecting. And it is possible to actively go out and seek that kind of unconnected um, connection. So those are my tips on clearing creativity blocks and see you next time.